Early into his term, Philippine President Rodrigo Duterte opened old wounds. In 2017, he ordered the burial of the country's late dictator, Ferdinand Marcos, in the Libingan na mga Bayani or Heroes Cemetery. The government said it was honoring a man for his years in public service. But critics countered, saying it was a desecration of hallowed ground. We felt betrayed because Marcos was stealthily brought here because they were worried from the amount of calls from people in social media and in real life that the burial will be blocked. Marcos was a strongman who was president for two decades from 1965. During that time, his family amassed a fortune of up to $10 billion, and he held on to power through brutal means. Amnesty International says the dictatorship killed more than 3,000 people and ordered the torture of 35,000 others. He was deposed by a popular revolution in 1986 and died in exile in the U.S. three years later. The family he left behind continues to defend his legacy and has remained in the political spotlight. His wife Imelda was elected as a lawmaker, and their children swapped stints as governor of their home province, and they didn't stop there. Aimi Marcos is a sitting senator, while Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is currently running for the presidency. Whatever grudges we have, we can debate about them until kingdom come. For me, my father is the best, of course, because I'm his child. Oh, I think a great deal of it was made up because none of it has been verified. These huge numbers that we, we hear about, uh, we don't really know where they come from and uh, how, how, they were, how they were made up. Philippine voters will choose a new president next week. And Marcos Jr. seems poised to take the seat his father once occupied. It's proof that time can heal or at least bury old wounds. Paolo Montesilio, TRT World.